Ever heard the story of a leader who turned a pirate kidnapping into a springboard for his meteoric rise? Welcome to the world of Julius Caesar, a man whose life story rivals any modern-day thriller. His journey from an ambitious youth to a legendary figure is a tale of cunning, bravery and sheer audacity. So buckle up as we unravel the dramatic rise and fall of one of history's most iconic leaders. Julius Caesar's story begins in 100 BCE. In the heart of Rome, born into the Julii, a family boasting of ancestors reaching back to the mythic founders of Rome. But don't let that noble lineage fool you. The Caesars were far from the wealthiest in town. Young Julius grew up in a Rome where political power was the ultimate prize, and the game to win it was played fiercely. As a young man, Caesar's life was anything but dull. Imagine this. Julius, barely in his twenties, is captured by pirates. Yes, pirates. The brash young Roman not only promises to pay his ransom, but also vows to return and crucify his captors. Sounds like a blockbuster movie plot, right? But it's true. Caesar, true to his word, later captured and crucified them, setting an early example of his determination and ruthlessness. But let's not just focus on his audacity. Caesar was ambitious and intelligent with a flair for both military and political strategy. He quickly realized that in the cutthroat world of Roman politics, allies were as important as achievements. So, he aligned himself with powerful figures, namely Pompey and Crassus, forming the First Triumvirate, an alliance that would propel him to greater heights. This ambitious young man, who once roamed the streets of Subura, a modest neighborhood in Rome, was climbing the ladder at an astonishing pace. By 59 BCE, he had become consul, one of the highest offices in the Republic. His eye, however, was set on something greater, military glory and he would soon find it in the lands of Gaul, a region that would not only test his mettle, but also serve as the battleground for his ascent to unparalleled power. Julius Caesar's early life was laying the groundwork for what would become a legendary career, marked by brilliance, controversy, and an unquenchable thirst for power. Stay tuned as we explore how this ambitious consul went on to conquer not just lands, but the hearts and minds of his people, reshaping the Roman Republic forever. Transitioning from a consul to a conqueror, Julius Caesar's journey to greatness was anything but ordinary. The stage for his meteoric rise was set in Gaul, now modern-day France and Belgium, where his military campaigns would become the stuff of legend. In 58 BCE, Caesar took command of Roman forces in Gaul. What followed was a masterclass in military strategy and leadership. Over the next eight years, he led his legions across the vast and diverse landscapes of Gaul facing fierce tribes and formidable warriors. But Caesar was not just a general, he was a storyteller. He chronicled his exploits in the Commentarii de Bello Gallico, a series of commentaries that not only informed Romans back home of his victories, but also glorified his achievements. Picture this, Caesar pen in hand narrating the drama of battle, casting himself as the hero in a saga of conquest and courage. His military campaigns weren't just battles, they were narratives that captivated the Roman public. But Caesar's ambitions stretched beyond the battlefields of Gaul. He was playing a political game, one that required cunning and foresight. Back in Rome, his allies in the Triumvirate were waning. Crassus had died in battle, and Pompey, once a friend, turned into a rival. Caesar's successes in Gaul had made him immensely popular and powerful, but they also stirred envy and fear among the political elite in Rome. The climax of this act came with a single decisive action, the crossing of the Rubicon River in 49 BCE. This wasn't just a geographical crossing, it was a political thunderbolt. The Rubicon was the boundary between his province and Italy. By crossing it with his army, Caesar defied the Senate and broke the law, uttering the famous phrase, Alea iacta est, the die is cast. This bold move plunged Rome into a civil war. Imagine the tension in the air as Caesar made this fateful decision, knowing well that there was no turning back. The ensuing civil war was a roller coaster of alliances, betrayals, and battles. Caesar emerged victorious, defeating Pompey, who fled to Egypt and was later killed. Caesar followed him to Egypt, where he became entangled in Egyptian politics, famously allying with Cleopatra. This wasn't just about power, it was about legacy and love. Caesar's liaison with Cleopatra added a dramatic twist to his story, one that would echo through history. By 45 BCE, Caesar was back in Rome, more powerful than ever. He was appointed dictator for life, 
a title that signified the end of the Roman Republic as it was known. His reforms were swift and significant. He restructured the Senate, reformed the calendar, and initiated public works. But with great power came great resistance. His rule, though effective, sparked fear and resentment among the elite. Now we see a man who reshaped the world around him through sheer will, military genius and political acumen. From the rolling hills of Gaul to the heart of Rome, he left an indelible mark. But as we'll see, the heights of power can be precariously close to the edge of downfall. In this pivotal chapter of Caesar's life, we witness a transformation that would forever alter the course of Roman history. Now the unrivaled ruler of Rome, Caesar's ascent to power was complete, but it was a summit fraught with challenges and controversies. Upon his return to Rome, Caesar found a republic in disarray. His victory in the civil war had left him with unmatched power, and in 44 BCE, he was declared dictator perpetuo, dictator for life. This title, though a recognition of his achievements, was a harbinger of troubles to come. To many, it signaled the death of the Republic and the birth of tyranny. Imagine the Roman Senate, once a powerhouse of political debate, now overshadowed by the looming figure of Caesar. The irony was stark. The man who had saved Rome from civil war was now perceived as its greatest threat. Caesar, however, was not just a conqueror, but a reformer at heart. He embarked on a series of ambitious reforms aimed at stabilizing the empire. One of his most enduring legacies was the Julian calendar, a precursor to the modern calendar we use today. This wasn't just a technical adjustment, it was a symbol of a new era in Roman history. He also initiated major infrastructure projects, like the rebuilding of Carthage and Corinth, and introduced social reforms to aid Rome's poor. These moves, though beneficial, were also tools for solidifying his power. But in the corridors of power, resentment was brewing. Caesar's style of rule, while effective, did not sit well with many traditionalists. His concentration of power, disregard for republican norms, and even his portrayal as a semi-divine figure were seen as affronts to Roman values. The Senate, once the center of Roman political life, felt increasingly sidelined. The seeds of conspiracy were sown in this environment of discontent. A group of senators, led by Cassius and Brutus, began plotting against Caesar. They believed that by removing him, they could restore the Republic to its former glory. The stage was set for one of history's most infamous betrayals. As he grows older, Julius Caesar emerges as a figure larger than life, a ruler who transformed Rome with his visionary reforms, but also sowed the seeds of his own demise. His story is a stark reminder of the delicate balance between power and perception, reform and tyranny. Moving on, we find ourselves at the precipice of his downfall, a tale of intrigue and betrayal that would seal his fate and forever mark the Ides of March in the annals of history. The year is 44 BCE and despite his sweeping reforms and unparalleled authority, Caesar's grip on Rome was far from secure. Beneath the surface of his grandiose public image, a faction of the Roman Senate simmered with resentment. Leading this faction were Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus, names that would become synonymous with betrayal. These senators, along with a group of co-conspirators, saw Caesar not as the savior of Rome, but as a tyrant who had to be stopped to preserve the Republic. The conspiracy against Caesar was as cunning as it was bold. The plotters carefully masked their intentions, planning their move under a veil of secrecy. The Ides of March, a day in the Roman calendar that corresponds to March 15th, was chosen for its routine Senate meeting providing the perfect setting for their dark deed. On that fateful day as Caesar entered the Senate at the Theatre of Pompeii, he was unaware of the deadly plot that awaited him. As the senators gathered around him, ostensibly to pay homage, the attack was unleashed. In a frenzied moment of violence, Caesar was stabbed 23 times, a brutal end to the life of Rome's most powerful figure. His last words, as immortalized by Shakespeare, et tu, brute, even you, Brutus, capture the shock and betrayal he must have felt in his final moments. The assassination of Julius Caesar sent shockwaves through Rome. Far from restoring the Republic, it plunged Rome further into chaos, leading to another cycle of civil wars. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of power and the volatility of political alliances. In this final act, Julius Caesar's story comes to a dramatic and tragic end. His life, marked by ambition, brilliance and controversy, shaped not just the fate of Rome, 
but left an indelible mark on world history. His assassination, a pivotal moment in history, marks the end of the Roman Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire. As we reflect on his legacy, we're reminded that in the grand theatre of history, the line between a hero and a villain is often blurred, and the echoes of their deeds resonate long after they're gone. Julius Caesar's story, a blend of ambition, power and tragedy, leaves us questioning the nature of leadership and legacy. His life, a complex tapestry of triumphs and downfalls, continues to echo through history, challenging our perceptions of greatness. As we reflect on Caesar's journey, we're left to wonder, was he a visionary leader who forever changed the course of history, or a tyrant who overreached his bounds? What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below.